Hello and thank you for watching my presentation regarding our publication Towards Inclusive External Communication of Autonomous Vehicles for Pedestrians with Vision Impairments. I am Mark Colley from Ulm University. According to the World Health Organization, there are currently about 1.3 billion people with some, 217 million people with moderate to severe vision impairment and 36 million people are blind. One argument for the introduction of autonomous vehicles, amongst others, is the projected improved mobility for people not capable of using a vehicle today, children, elderly, and people with vision impairments. However, while using autonomous vehicles can increase mobility, other aspects have to be accounted for. Autonomous vehicles will not only affect drivers, or rather passengers, but also other road users, such as pedestrians or cyclists. In demanding situations, people today rely on eye contact and gestures. Autonomous vehicles could drive with a human passenger distracted, sleeping, or even without a human present. Recent research projects aim to overcome the possible challenges that arise from a missing passenger. To substitute or to even improve the missing communication possibilities, various messages and technologies such as LED strips, displays, projections and even simulated eyes have been proposed and evaluated. Some of them are shown on this slide. You can already see a variety of visual stimuli. But are these sufficient for people with visual impairments? To answer this question, we first screened Science Direct, Google Scholar, as well as ResearchGate for work on external communication of autonomous vehicles and group them by the use modality. This was done until August 2019. 33 publications were found. The distribution of works can be seen in this pie chart. All concepts include a visual cue and most work focused only on visual cues. Only 9 or 27% include an auditory cue. We then investigated the auditory cues for their information content and duration. We found that auditory cues did not always convey the same message as their visual counterparts, which is in violation of the Universal Design Principle 4a. Use different modes, pictorial, verbal, tactile, for redundant presentation of essential information. This would not be too worrisome, however, the work that actually investigated auditory or tactile concepts included auditory cues such as bells, music or honks. Only Madevan et al. actually used spoken words. To gain further insights into the proposed concepts and to define requirements for potential improvements, we held a workshop in Munich with six experts on accessibility, five being visually impaired themselves and one being a wheelchair user. The workshop was split into two parts, evaluation of the proposed concepts and a discussion on challenges of current mobility and how external communication of autonomous vehicles could aid. For the evaluation, we designed a virtual reality simulation in which the participant stands at a street with vehicles passing. We modeled autonomous vehicles equipped with an acoustic vehicle alerting system, therefore imitating electric vehicles. The same simulation setup was used in the second study, which I will show later. When a vehicle stopped to let the participant pass, which the participant did not actually do, the sound under evaluation or the tactile concept was presented. This can be seen on the left of this slide. We opted for a virtual reality simulation to be able to correctly produce three-dimensional sound and to account for potential remaining sight. The discussion premises can be seen on the right side. Afterwards, the workshop was coded by three authors via open and actual coding. Conflicts were resolved via discussions amongst the researchers. I only want to touch certain relevant points of the results. For a deeper look, please consult our paper. We deduced communication needs of people with visual impairments for a journey. As no or almost no visual information is available, People with visual impairments deduce information from what we call implicit communication, for example, engine noises or chattering people. This increases awareness, which itself increases safety and the perception of safety. This perceptible implicit communication is needed continuously to allow for a near future prediction, as defined in Ensley's model of situational awareness. In unclear situations, 
are situations where decisions such as do I cross the street have to be made, explicit communication is wanted. For example, a person telling you that the street is free or a traffic light for the blind emitting a clicking sound. Requirement for this communication is first and foremost unambiguousness, which is split into standardization, perceptibility and distinctiveness. Workshop participants did not mention authority aversion, but actually embraced it. Based on these requirements, only the spoken text of Madhivan et al. was rated appropriate. However, to increase perceptibility, designers of such messages should not exclusively focus on shortness. Participants stated that more information would be useful. Therefore, the preferred message was, I'm stopping, you can cross. Looking into the possibilities of autonomous traffic, a novel communication concept called the omniscient narrator was developed. In fully automated traffic, vehicles can communicate with each other via vehicle-to-everything technology. This can be used to determine the perfect timing for the vehicles to stop based on the presence of pedestrians. As the vehicles will communicate their intention among themselves, for example via Wi-Fi or 5G based networks, only the nearest vehicle could communicate via the auditory channel with the pedestrian, therefore acting as an omniscient narrator. This would avoid noise pollution. Current concepts implicitly assume that all relevant autonomous vehicles will communicate with the pedestrian. In mixed traffic, with a manually driven vehicle approaching on the other lane, an autonomous vehicle would only communicate its own intention, for example, I'm stopping. The manually driven vehicle is displayed in purple on this slide. This varying message also indicates to the person with a vision impairment that extra caution is necessary. To evaluate the impact of the variables information content and number of communicating vehicles, we developed a study in virtual reality. Information content refers to a short message, for example, cross, or a long message, for example, I'm stopping, you can cross. The number of communicating vehicles refers to whether all relevant autonomous vehicles communicate or whether only one communicates, equaling the omniscient narrator. We also wanted to look into differences in the ratings between people with visual impairments and seeing participants. This resembles a 2 times 2 within subjects design with a baseline and a between subjects factor site. We recruited 33 participants, of which 8 had a visual impairment. These were not part of the workshop. Here I want to show you a screenshot of the simulation. The goal for participants was to reach the green marker on the opposite side. After a random number of vehicles passed, vehicles stop and produce, for example, the sound, I'm stopping, you can cross. On the right side, you can see footage of one participant with a vision impairment. I want to highlight the half rounds attached to the floor to mimic curbs at the side of the road. I do not want to go further into details for other dependent variables such as trust, cognitive float or affective state. For more information, please refer to the paper. I just want to go into the preference mentioned as shown on this slide. The proposed omniscient narrator concept was preferred over no communication. However, it was preferred that all vehicles communicate. The high information content was always preferred over the low information content. We have a few assumptions why the omniscient narrator was not rated best. While we introduced the system that one can be sure that the other vehicle will stop after this message is played, some participants were not aware of this and were therefore confused. Especially people with visual impairments also stated distrust towards the reliability of such communication. A principle in accessible design is to always address multiple senses. This was also mentioned in the workshop. Our results showed that auditory external communication is necessary for people with visual impairments and that the seeing participants rated the concepts better than no communication as well. However, they also mentioned the wish for visual communication and highlighted some advantages such as earlier possible reaction times. While assistive technology should avoid highlighting the impairment and therefore auditory communication only when people with visual impairments are recognized, for example via their cane or a badge, seems unfeasible, one participant of the workshop actually wanted this. 
He stated that he wants a signal when his cane is recognized or his badge. Our work shows the need to include people with impairments at an early stage of the development of novel interaction concepts to truly increase accessibility and inclusiveness through advanced technology. Thank you for watching my talk. Feel free to contact me in case there are any questions.